Hey everyone, Doug here. I wanted to do a video where I talk about how you connect up projectors to your video production system because there's a lot of different ways that can be done. I know sometimes it can seem like it's easy, but you know, projectors have tend, tend to have uh, slightly different connectivity options than monitors do. So I wanted to go over some of the different options why you'd use one versus another. And I'm gonna show you on a variety of projectors. Unfortunately, this is only a handful of the ones that I have. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you on a variety of projectors, like the best way to make e each one of these uh, connect up to your video switcher or a playback device or whatever you happen to be using. So obviously the easiest thing to do is if you have a projector that actually has HDMI on it. So I'll flip this guy around here, you can see on the back, you know, there it's got HDMI port. That makes it nice and easy, right? So you just take HDMI output of your switcher or you take an SDI to HDMI converter, plug that in, Boom, you're done, everything works great. That's nice and easy. However, that isn't always going to be the case. It's particularly with projectors that are permanently installed in venues, maybe they're a little older, they don't have HDMI, or they're not using HDMI because HDMI doesn't actually travel long distances. Now, if you're trying to do a long signal run, HDMI is not your best option. I have an entire video on doing long HDMI signal runs. There's a link to that down around the bottom of your screen and then video description. But HDMI is really not ideal. It's not meant for long runs, and so we want to come up with something else. So the next available option is going to be SDI. You know, this is going to be very common with professional video switchers and very easy to obtain. If you have something like an A10 Mini that only has HDMI outputs, get yourself a small little HDMI to SDI converter, and then you can run SDI to a projector somewhere, nice and easy. Uh, the great thing about SDI is it's meant to do long, long signal runs. It's certified depending on the quality of the cable, it's certified to go out to 100 meters. The problem there is when you get yourself into a venue that already has a permanently installed projector and you, they already have permanently installed cables, and you don't have a lot of options in, far, in terms of connectivity. Now, another thing we, we gotta watch out for is projectors that actually don't have HDMI, like the ones that are over here on, on your left, on my right. You, you will still find these things in a lot of different locations, and so it's good to know how to connect into one of these things uh, if, if you're if you have the option to wire directly into the back, and I'll cover some of that. So SDI is gonna be the best connection. HDMI is gonna be your next best bet if you possibly can, if your projector actually has it. But what, where do you go from there? And from, from there, we're gonna be getting into some either unusual or older connect, connectivity types that might be a bit of an issue. So let's take a look at a couple of those. So the first one I wanted to mention is this one right here, DVI. It's not something you see very often anymore, but it does still exist, and it's good to know how to utilize it and to carry some adapters for those cases, those times when you might. So one thing that's not super widely, widely known about DVI is it's actually the same type of signal as HDMI, even though the connector is different. In a lot of cases, you can get away with just having a little HDMI adapter like this one. So it has a DVI output, and then the HDMI input, and that makes it really easy to, to plug in an HDMI into one of these projectors. You basically just plug it into the port there, plug in your HDMI cable, and you're good to go. Another similar option is an HDMI to DVI cable. So this cable has HDMI on one end, and then DVI on the other. And then you're able to plug in, and that should just work. Now for the type of work that we do in this field in video production, we don't have to worry about copy protection much, but should keep in mind that a lot of DVI ports that are out there don't actually support copy protection. So if you're hooking in, say, if they, say for example, you wanted to play back a commercial video, you hook it to a laptop, hook a projector to a laptop, everything looks great until you hit the play button for that copyrighted video and everything goes black because the device you're plugging into doesn't support copy protection. And that would be the case with a lot of these projectors. They, even though they support the HDMI type of signaling, once the signal is encrypted, they'll no, no longer display any video for you. So something to watch out, some, out for, something to be aware of. Now, one of the downsides to doing this is you might run into compatibilities with resolutions and frame rates. For example, these, these projectors are a little older. Their native resolution is like 1440 by 1024, something in that ballpark. And they don't support a full 1920 by 1080. So if you try to send it a 1080p signal, it might not work, depending on what the, what the projector model is. So in that case, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you have yourself a nice video standards converter. Now the converter that I use the most is this Decimator MDHX. This is a great product. This will convert 
basically any HD or, or lower resolution signal from any format to any other format. It also does conversion from SDI to HDMI and HDMI to SDI. And it'll do that simultaneously, so you can have two different signals that are flowing. I find these to be extremely useful, especially when I'm working with companies that are doing a business conference. And they've got somebody with a laptop and they want to be able to project video onto a screen, but I also need to incorporate that video as part of my video production, my live stream. I'll set up one of these guys, HDMI input coming from the laptop, HDMI output going to a nearby projector. They very often like to be near the projector for whatever reason. And then I run fiber or SDI from this back to my switcher uh, and then do any necessary conversion with this in order to get the video into the right format for my switcher. Anyway, this is super, super handy to have something like this. So in this case, we would take our incoming 1080p video and maybe convert it down to 720p so that it's something that's actually recognized by a projector that's maybe a little older and doesn't support a 1080p video signal. So anyway, super handy to have one of these. And these aren't the only things out there. You know, I also have a Blackmagic Design Up Down Cross HD, which does a lot of the same things. Uh, it's quite a bit more affordable than this guy. So if you're trying to save a, save a few dollars, you can get, pick up one of those instead of one of these. But links to links of the both of those are gonna be in the video description down below. Now, what do we do if we get into a situation where the projector that we're hooking into doesn't have a digital connect, a connection or the digital connection that it has doesn't support the video format that we happen to be using? Well, there's some analog options we can take advantage of as well. So if we take a look at the back of this projector, we can see it has computer one and then computer two. Those are VGA connections. Uh, that connector is called a D-sub, a 15 pin signal. And then we come down a little bit further and this row right here, this is component video. You can see here we've got Y, C, B, C, R. And honestly, if I'm in a situation where I have to use analog, I'm, I'm very much gonna prefer using Y, C, R, C, B over VGA. And the main reason for that is the color space that we're happening to be working in. So VGA uses RGB, red, green, blue. However, when we're producing video, the signals coming out of our cameras and our video switchers and video playback devices and whatever, it's not RGB, it's actually YCRCB. And so if we're able to connect to a projector in that same color space, we're not having to do any sort of conversions. Those conversions are actually lossy. You do lose some fidelity of your picture if you have to convert from SDI, HDMI to VGA because of the conversion from YCRCB to RGB. I will do a future video on that and it's actually a lot more lossy than you would think. I've done some testing on that and you do actually lose quite a bit of color information in making that conversion. So if I'm in a situation where I have a projector that has the YCRCB connections on it and no digital, I'm gonna be using that over uh, VGA. Now I'm sure you're wondering how in the world do I do that? All my signals are SDI or HDMI. Uh, I don't have any component video coming out of my switcher. Well, the answer to that is something like this guy. This is Blackmagic SDI to analog adapter. And you can see over here on this side, it actually has the SDI input down here at the bottom. And then over here on this side, it has your component video output. So there's your Y, this is uh, C, CB, and then this one is CR. So at that point, all you really need to do is take your Y output, connect that into your Y input on your projector, take your B minus Y, which is actually CB, plug that into a CB connection on the projector. And then we'll do one more for the R minus Y, which is actually the same as CR. Plug that in. And then we'll need to set the dip switches on the converter here to output a component video signal instead of a composite video signal. So if we take a look on the back, that's upside down. So we'll need to set this to the component setting. Sorry, I, my apologies for that being out of focus. And this converter, you set the switch, switch five to the down position, and then you come down here and you're gonna to wanna to cycle switch number one off and on a few times in order to get the right aspect ratio. So you'll be able to get 16 by nine instead of four by three. So anyway, that's, that's, kind of, that's a great option. And that would be my next choice uh, when no digital options are available. Now, these YCRCB connections are actually more common than you might think. So here's the projector that actually has, there we go, actually has one 
directly on it and it uses RCA cables. Uh, but even if a projector doesn't necessarily have jacks that are labeled that way, sometimes it actually does support the component video. So I'll show you this projector as an example. On this one, you look on the back, you only see a VGA connection there. Well, but the truth is, it actually does support component. It actually shipped with this adapter cable. So, in this case, you plug that plug the cable into the, v, the VGA computer input, and there's your component YCRCB connections that are available right there. So, even if you find that a projector doesn't necessarily have connectors that are labeled YCRCB, usually BNCs or RCAs, the projector might actually support it. So you might need to look and find a cable uh, that actually supports that connection or research from the manufacturer and see if there's another way to get that signal into a particular model. All right, so if a projector doesn't actually support YCRCB, but it does have a VGA connector, you probably are gonna need some sort of converter in order to go from SDI or HDMI to VGA. And fortunately, these are actually pretty easy to obtain. I've got this one that I use, let me pull it out of the bag here. Uh, this has been kind of my go-to whenever I've needed to do this. And it hasn't happened frequently, but it has happened a few times. So this one actually has an SDI input on one side, and then on the other side it has your VGA output. There's a, a separate audio if you need to break that out. And then it has an SDI output, so you can loop that onto the next thing. The other thing that it has here is a VGA resolution button. And this actually has a scaler built into it. So if your projector doesn't support the video resolution that you happen to be shooting, you can tap that button a few times and this will automatically downscale to a lot of common VGA resolutions. Now, keep in mind, as I said a minute ago, VGA is really not an ideal way to get video from a production system into a projector. So definitely make this one of your lower priority options and only use VGA if you absolutely have to. All right, so what do we do if projector doesn't have any of those? Well, now we're getting into stuff that's a little more region specific. Uh, but if we take a look at the back of this projector, we can see that it actually has S-Video, which is a, a four pin DIN connector. And then it has an RCA connector here, yellow, and that's composite video. I wouldn't use these unless you have really have no other choice because these are, are standard definition, low resolution, low color fidelity, uh, smaller color space signals than a high definition that most of us tend, tend to work in. So if you have to use one of these things, you're actually going to be losing a lot of your picture detail in, in the process of converting it to a signal that the projector can actually use. Now, in the case of uh, using it on a projector in a big room where people are sitting far away from the screen, they may not actually notice. But if you have another option, I would definitely take it. Now, how do we get one of those signals? Well, again, that's where our SDI to analog adapter comes in. So this guy will also do conversions from SDI to S-Video and to composite as well. So if we take a look at some of the connections here, if we put it into composite mode, it says Y or NTSC PAL. So at that point, this actually outputs a composite signal. And then we come down to these two. This one outputs S-Video Y, which is the luminance or the brightness portion of the image. And then this one outputs S-Video C, which is a chroma or color portion of the image. So if you wanted to use the S-Video capability of this, you would need an adapter cable that converts a BNC to that four pin DIN connector that S-Video uses. In terms of the composite, it will either connect up directly with BNC or you can use a very simple BNC to RCA adapter. And that will get you a signal that you can plug directly into a composite video input. Now, if you're lucky enough to be working in a venue where they have multiple projectors that you can actually choose from, why would you choose a big monster like this versus something a lot more compact like this? On paper, there are a lot of similarities between these. These over here, this particular model is 5,000 lumens. This one down here is 4,000, so not a lot of difference there. This one is full HD, so 1080p, whereas these are not. But in most situations, I'm gonna go with one of these big ones for a few reasons. First of all, these things are meant to be run over long periods of time. They have very high quality cooling, big fans. So they're meant to be run for hours and hours and hours at a time. The other thing about these is you have the choice of lenses that you can put on them, which gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of placement of the projector relative to the screen. So if you're set, setting up in a venue where the projector, it has to be a long way from the screen, you can actually put a long throw lens onto one of these 
and be able to send that signal a long distance without the image getting too big. Whereas on these other ones, these have to be pretty close to the screen. All right, one other very cool thing about these large projectors is they tend to have the ability to do what we call stacking. I and mean, what that allows you to do is actually physically stack multiple project projectors on top of one another. I've got three of these. I can actually stack three of them on top of one another. And then we take a look at the bottom here. It has a monitor output, and that's a VGA connection. Now, what this monitor output actually lets us do is to stack multiple projectors on top of one another or side by side and to have them all be showing the same signal. So you connect your video system into your DVI or your VGA or your component video, and then that monitor output will actually take whatever signal that projector is displaying and output that so it can go to another, another, another projector. And the way we do that is just using a simple VGA cable. So you just daisy chain from one projector to the computer input on the next and so forth for however many projectors you happen to have. So. And once those things are connected, you're able to go into the menu of the projector and then align those images so that they line up perfectly, pixel perfect, and then you're able to get a much brighter image than you can otherwise. That's the main reason I actually keep these old beasts. I have three of them. There's been a few times when I need to get a really bright image, and in that case, I'll bring in all three of them, daisy chain from one to the next in order to get a signal that's nice and bright uh, in a room that happens to be well lit or... Uh, where the audience is far away from the screen. But with that said, the projector I actually use the most these days is this little guy down here at the bottom, this Epson. So it's nice and easy to set up. It's quite bright. As you can see on the back, it has the HDMI connections that are necessary in order to make it work in most situations. And it, I find that this is plenty bright for most of the situations that I work in. And so you can, act, you can actually get a nice bright projector in something that's small and compact like this. So there we go, that's gonna about do it. Those are the major connection types that you're likely to experience or run into here in North America. Outside the rest of the world, some of those analog connections will probably vary a little bit, but uh, fortunately those things are tending to uh, dis be disappearing in this day and age. You don't see very many of those any longer. I would still not say that HDMI is super common just yet. They might have HDMI at like a, a podium where a presenter might plug in a laptop, but in terms of connections for an AVT team coming in, you might find that HDMI is harder to come by than you might imagine. So it would be a good idea to be prepared for the other signal types that are out there. Anyway, if you guys have any questions about this, please leave those in the comment section down below or join us over on Discord. I have a Discord server set up and I'll have a channel specifically dedicated to uh, this particular topic. So look for that there. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try to do video production related content about once a week, although the last few months that schedule has been a little bit slower. I moved into a new home and it's still taking me a while to get organized. I will be setting up a room in this home specifically for shooting YouTube videos. At that point, I'll be able to do at least once a week on videos. And that's something you want to see, the construction of that room and the rest of my media suite in my basement. You might want to consider joining me on Patreon or signing up as a YouTube member by clicking on the join button down below the video. I am documenting that process as I go. So if that's something you want to see, you want to participate in that process, you can join me over there. So that's going to do it. So thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.